Did you know your radio with OpenGD77 installed can be a hotspot? So you can access the, the Brandmeister network right from your house. I'm gonna show you how to set it up. Stick around. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. To get hotspot mode, obviously you do need to install OpenGD77 on your radio. Check out my video on that. Step-by-step -step shows you exactly how to do it. Then what you need to do is you need to get yourself a Raspberry Pi. Now, there might be other boards that this works on. I'm showing you on the Raspberry Pi. It's it's the most, uh, most people have Raspberry Pis and it's and it's one of the easiest ones to get support for. So you can buy the uh, the, the whole set. If you do buy a Raspberry Pi, please make sure, uh, number one, you, you don't need an HDMI cord. You probably don't even need these heat sinks. I'm not sure if they even work very well. You do need a power supply and you need the board, okay? Uh, you could run off of a 3B+, plus. you could run off of a 4, you could run off probably the pretty old ones. I don't think this is very data intensive. You could also, I believe, run it off of the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now, the cool thing is that saves you a lot of money. Um, you do need a USB port, and the nice thing is this comes with this USB adapter. Uh, I'm not sure how well we can see this, but this plugs in, and then you've got a full-size USB, so you can plug in. So get yourself a Raspberry Pi. If you already have it, awesome, you're all set. Next, go to pistar.uk. All right, and there's a bunch of information and you're more than welcome to read it all. Uh, otherwise, just go to Downloads and go to Download Pistar. Then what you want to do is you want to choose which one you would like to download. So that would be the uh, Raspberry Pi version 4. I wonder, I believe that actually goes for the, the version 4, um, the Raspberry Pi 4, or the Raspberry Pi 3B. I'm not totally sure on that. I think I just downloaded the newest one, but uh, if you do have any issues, please just, just download the other image and uh, and it should work. It, it's pretty much plug, plug and play. It gives you directions and I'm going to walk you through them. But what you're going to do is you are going to go to, so you'll download this, the zip file. So let me do that really quickly. <clears throat> All right. So I downloaded the file. Now what you need to do is unzip it and you'll see in that folder there will be an image, and that's the disk image you want to use. Then go to raspberrypi.org, go to downloads, and then you want to go to Raspberry Pi Imager for Windows, Mac, or Ubuntu, whichever one you want, whichever one you're going to be working on. Once that downloads, go ahead and open it up. You want to put your SD card into your computer, obviously. We're going to install this and then run it. The next step, once that, make sure your SD card is in there, choose your OS. So you go in there and you're going to scroll down and say use custom. It might be listed up here, I, I don't think it is though. Use custom. Choose it from your, uh, wherever you loaded it. So I have it right here. All right, then you need to choose your SD card and click right. It'll take a while, it'll validate it. And then once you're done, it should eject it. If it doesn't, make sure you, you know, you eject it through Windows. Take it out, put it into your Raspberry Pi. You'll notice here it says, um, all you need to do is download the zip file of the image that is most suitable for your Pi. Single board, unzip the download, then flash the image. Boot the Pi, wait 30 to 40 seconds, and then log in. So make sure your Raspberry Pi is plugged into your router. Once it's plugged in, go ahead and uh, go to your router information. So here's my router information. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for Pi Star and we're going to see the IP address. Uh, the way you do this is you look under DHCP server and then client list. It's normally the same for almost every single router that I've worked on. So enter your router address. If you don't know your router's address, a really good way of doing that in Windows would be going to the command prompt, type IP config, and you're going to see uh, right here under the I, the default gateway 192.168.11. Once again, you type IP config and uh, and just type that into your browser, and that'll take you here. You'll log in with your default login, and then find the IP address 
of your Pi Star. Now I like to keep it, uh, reserve it. So some of these you can just click reserve. Others you have to copy the MAC address. Um, and I am blocking that information just for the safety of my computer. But uh, you, you could copy that MAC address and reserve it to that IP address so it's always the same. Once you enter that IP address, you're going to see that you're going to log in. The default username is pi-star, password raspberry. So I'm going to say pi-star, raspberry. And mine's set up, and I'll show you, and you're going to make your page look just like mine. Okay, so mine, it says it's the Pi 3 Model B. Okay, there are no changes there. Make sure you choose MMDVM host. Uh, choose that simplex mode and then DMR. Uh, if this isn't there, once you hit apply changes, this pops up, I believe. I'm only operating DMR mode. If you have a, a D-Star radio, or a Yesu, Yesu radio, a P25, you'd want to turn those on. Then we scroll down, give it a host name. I just kept it named Pi Star so I can identify it on my network. Put your call sign in there. Put your DMR ID that you're going to use for this. Um, and I'll show you, this is actually protected by a password. So even though you're seeing all my settings, there's no way. It's not very easy for someone to get in there and, and make any changes. I'm setting my radio frequency. Personally, I'm using my hotspot on 445.2. Just make sure you're you're operating at a uh, at a frequency that, that makes sense for your license and your local area. I, I operate on very low power, so I'm not I'm not going to be interfering with many people. But I also chose a chose a frequency where I'm not you know interfering. I I don't hear any traffic on that, hardly ever. You can set your latitude and longitude if you want. Say your your uh, your town, your country. Enter that information. Then you're going to click here and you're going to go all the way down to the bottom. Open GD77 DMR hotspot USB. I. Uh, I chose private. I'm not sure why we would choose public, maybe for other people to use it. Uh, APR host, APRS host, just choose the one closest to you. There's a bunch of choices on there. Choose the one closest to you. Choose your time zone. Hit apply, right? The way it saves is if we hit apply. Hit those along the way, because I don't know if it resets the other boxes. So make sure you do that. Then choose your DMR master. I obviously choose the one that's closest to you. The hotspot security, if you use this, if you leave this blank, it'll log in. It'll log in. You can't just randomly type something in here. I'm going to show you what you need to do. So you're going to log into your Brandmeister account. Now, once you're logged in, you're going to go up here and you're going to go to self care. Now, you don't have to do this, but they do suggest it and they prefer, uh, Pi, I believe it was PyStar and Brandmeister, both prefer that we do this. So what we need to do is, you need to choose the DMR ID that you're using. You can change your settings in here, however you'd like, and turn on hotspot security. Click on and then type your password, the password that you want. You're making up a password here. And this is what's going to protect your hotspot and protect someone else from setting up a hotspot using your DMR ID. Now I put a password on both of mine because I don't want people to be able to set up a hotspot pretending to be me. I don't think that's very likely, but uh, they are pr password protected and I believe mine are 24 random characters. So you can choose a very long password. Then we go back to our PyStar and we enter that same password here. Okay, this password needs to line up with the password that you set up in your self-care. All right, make sure in self-care you hit save. And enter that password. Uh, I set my color code as seven and then hit apply. Obviously you can connect to your internet uh, wirelessly, this would be the time. I had a lot of issues with this. I ended up having to uh, to enter the Wi-Fi information. I I think I hit connect, and then I ended up having to like turn the the Pi Star on and off a few times for the Wi-Fi to work. Eventually, once you get the Wi-Fi connected, maybe you'll have better luck. Uh, then you'll be able to just set it up wherever. So it's sitting in my basement. It's not. It's a wireless connection, and it works great. All right. Other than that, you are all set. So what you can do is you can look on your, on the, the different information. You can see, okay, it's set up. When you connect, I would suggest connecting to the Parrot and seeing if it's working. I, I don't recall the, the talk group name right now. Sorry about that. But this is, this, it's all, it's good to go. So all you need to do then is 
have OpenGD 77 installed on your radio. Plug it in to with your cord. Plug it in with the cord that came with it. All right, you're going to plug it in, right, to your port, and then plug the other end into the USB on your Raspberry Pi. Turn it on and make sure hot. I don't even think you have to turn on hotspot mode, but you might have to, you know, go in the menu and turn it on. But then wait a couple minutes and it's going to turn on the hotspot, right? Then you use another radio to connect through that hotspot, uh, another DMR radio to connect through that hotspot. And it works great. Now, a little bit more advanced stuff. If you go into admin, the, the only thing that I really, really I wanted to, to see, maybe it was configuration. Expert. Yes, expert. All right. So the thing that I really, really, really wanted to make sure that I had set up correctly was I wanted to make sure that I wasn't using a lot of energy, a lot of power, right? I, I, my radios are very close to each other. Why would I want to use a lot of power? And I've seen a lot of different videos, uh, different questions on forums asking about this power output. And what ends up happening is uh, people are, are changing the settings in the complete wrong section. So if I go in here and I look, and I believe it was this one. Yeah. So this power right here, that I don't believe has anything to do with anything. <laughs> I'm sure it has something to do with something, but that's just the info. That's just saying the info about it. All right, what you need to do is you need to go into the expert mode, go to the MMDVM host, and you're going to scroll down and you're going to see this is the level that it's going to be transmitting. On. All right, from memory, as far as I know, that's the one. And so if you set it at 100, what it ends up doing is it ends up transmitting at the power level that your radio is currently set at. So what I will do is I will turn on my radio. I will set it to whatever power I want my, my hotspot mode to be on. And then I plug it in. All right. If you want to set it to a specific level, you're more than welcome to change that value. I, I, I don't recall the specific values exactly what they do, but I do believe this is like set at a hundred percent of the power. What that means is it's going to just read whatever I set it up as. So if I'm just running it on my desk with this little rubber duck antenna and it's, uh, and I'm operating right here, I'm going to keep it at a very low level. If I'm going to operate from farther away and maybe I don't have a local repeater that has access to the DMR network or I want to talk on a talk group I don't have access to, what I would end up doing is then ramping up that power a little bit and connecting it to the antenna on my roof. So uh, hopefully that helps. Obviously hit apply changes. And if you have questions, I would definitely suggest OpenGD77.com or there's a Facebook group that you can follow and they, they're a lot of help. I'd say I could help you, but I, I can do my best. So feel free to mention it, you know, ask a question in the comments. Hopefully uh, I'll be able to get around to it. So have a great day, everybody.